Frustration, anger, and confrontations all on display as Democratic Party, we're watching you. Yeah. We are disappointed. Our tax bills are paid into the park district. Nobody asked us for permission. Nobody asked us how we felt about it. Well, the city initially allocated $150 million for the migrant mission this year alone. There are now close to 10,000 migrants living in Chicago shelters. 3,000 more are still waiting for placement. Migrants continue to flow into the city as frustration is mounting among Chicago residents. Chicago residents' frustration. You're a Chicago resident, minding your business, trying to navigate your way through the everyday hustle and bustle of city life. Then bam, you hear the news. The mayor wants to throw an extra $70 million into migrant funding. Cue the collective what the heck from residents across the city. Don't get me wrong, we're all for helping out those in need, but when it feels like our own backyard is getting neglected, that's when the frustration kicks in. You've got potholes big enough to swallow a small car on your street schools in desperate need of some TLC, and don't even get me started on the crime rate. And yet here we are, watching as millions of dollars are funneled into something that, let's be real, feels a bit disconnected from our everyday reality. Frustration, anger, and confrontations all on display as we're going to take over. Nobody's going to be able to stop us from what we're going to do to them. Officials here at this meeting promise that they are working for solutions to make the area around the shelter better for the neighborhood. Democratic Party, we're watching you. We are disappointed. It's not just about the money, though. It's about priorities. When you see your city struggling with issues that have been around long before the migrant crisis hit the headlines, it's hard not to feel like you're being overlooked. It's like waving your hand in class, desperate to be heard, only for the teacher to keep calling on the same kid who always has the answers. And let's talk about that lack of prioritization. We're saying migrants don't deserve support, they absolutely do, but shouldn't we be taking care of our own backyard first? It's like trying to fill up a leaky bucket instead of patching up the holes first. We need that money right here, right now, to tackle the issues that are staring us in the face every single day. So yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar that Chicago residents are raising their voices, speaking up against what feels like a misplaced use of funds. It's not about turning our backs on those in need, it's about making sure our own community doesn't get left behind in the process. And until that message gets through loud and clear, you can expect the frustration to keep on simmering. Migrants continue to flow into the city as frustration is mounting among Chicago residents. Goal again is to get our people away from this culture of liberal failure that's currently bankrupting our city and leaving the Americans behind. Openly give our money to people who don't deserve it is very insulting. We need that money in my neighborhood. We need that on my block. On uh, campaign promises you made to the city of Chicago, to communities, to 77 neighborhoods. Push for mayor's removal. Let's talk about some serious grassroots movement happening right here in Chicago. So imagine you're fed up with the way things are going in your city. You're tired of feeling like your voice isn't being heard, like the powers that be just aren't getting it. Well, guess what? You're not alone. Frustration has reached boiling point for some folks, and they're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. They're rolling up their sleeves and getting to work because they're set on showing the mayor the door. It's not just any old group leading the charge. We're talking about black voters, the backbone of the Democratic Party, stepping up and saying enough is enough. Mayor Johnson knows firsthand the impact of neglect on a vulnerable community and that he will never stop investing in our taxpayers, we're property owners, our money should go towards fixing our communities. Our tax bills are paid into the park district. Nobody asked us for permission. Nobody asked us how we felt about it. There are now close to 10,000 migrants living in Chicago shelters. 3,000 more are still waiting for placement. And the black all the women in this city, you will stand for the black citizens of Chicago. They've seen how the mayor's handling of the migrant crisis has left them feeling sidelined and ignored, and they're not having it anymore. So what do they do? They start making some noise. They show up at city council meetings wearing bright red shirts emblazoned with bold slogans like No More Blue, Go Red. Translation? They're done with the status quo and ready for a shakeup. These groups aren't just complaining for the sake of it, though. They're advocating for real change, for a political transformation that puts the needs of the community front and center. And you better believe they're not backing down until they see some action. 
It's a powerful statement, really. In a city where politics can sometimes feel like a spectator sport, these folks are saying, we're not just going to sit back and watch anymore. They're demanding accountability, transparency, and a government that actually listens to its people. So yeah, keep an eye out for those red shirts. They're a symbol of a movement that's gaining momentum by the day. And if the mayor thinks he can just brush them off as a bunch of disgruntled voters, well, he's got another thing coming. Change is coming to Chicago, and it's coming one red shirt at a time. Referendum for Mayor's Recall Things are about to get political. You're living in Chicago, and you're not too thrilled with the guy sitting in the mayor's chair. But here's the kicker. Current state laws say you can't just kick him out no matter how much you might want to. But where there's a will, there's a way. That's where these organizers come in. They're not ones to let a little thing like legal red tape stop them. They've got their eyes set on one goal, giving the people of Chicago a chance to have their say. They start rallying the troops, collecting signatures, and making some serious noise about introducing a referendum. That's right. They want to change the rules of the game and give voters the power to decide Mayor Johnson's fate come November. Now, you'd think the mayor might be feeling a little nervous about all this, right? Wrong! Instead, he's brushing off these efforts like a speck of lint on his shoulder. He's quick to label the movement as nothing more than a right-wing conspiracy, a bunch of noise from folks who couldn't care less about the real issues facing Chicago. But here's the thing. These organizers aren't backing down. They're not just a bunch of political pawns. They're regular folks from all walks of life, united by a common goal. They're tapping into the grassroots spirit of Chicago, rallying support from every corner of the city. So Mayor Johnson can try to shrug it off all he wants, but he better believe that these organizers mean business. They're not just fighting for a recall, they're fighting for democracy, for the right of every Chicagoan to have a voice in their city's future. So keep your eyes peeled, because come November, there's a referendum on the horizon, and it's bringing with it the promise of change, the promise of a Chicago where the people call the shots. Chicago's Migrant Eviction Policy Let's dive into the nitty-gritty of Chicago's migrant eviction policy. Mayor Brandon Johnson's got this plan where migrants living in homeless shelters get the boot after 60 days. The idea? Push them to find permanent digs and free up space in those overcrowded shelters. Sounds simple, right? Not so fast. Critics are slamming this move, and for good reason. They're waving the inhumane flag, arguing that it's like slapping a band-aid on a broken leg. Sure, the mayor's heart might be in the right place, aiming to ease the squeeze and help folks settle down, but reality bites hard. See, many of these migrants are fresh off the boat, figuratively speaking. They're scrambling for stability, lacking the cash and connections to land a cozy spot and a job pronto. And hey, let's not forget the exemptions. Families with kiddos in school and moms-to-be catch a break, but what about the rest? They're left in the lurch, wondering where the heck they're supposed to go next. It's like being handed a puzzle with half the pieces missing. Plus, there's this cloud of uncertainty hanging over their heads about snagging rental aid or scoring a work permit. Talk about adding insult to injury. What I'm frustrated about is the fact that the Biden administration um, is not handling the migrant. We are angry. Yes. We are offended. Mm -hmm. And we feel like we are being mistreated. And as that number continues to rise, more communities are grappling with the debate over shelters going up in their neighborhoods. Thousand migrants have moved to the city of Chicago, and of that number, 2,000 are still waiting for more permanent housing. But wait, there's more drama. City council members and activists are up in arms, kicking up dust over the whole deal. It's like a tug of war between those pushing for change and those sticking to the status quo. The heat's on, and Mayor Johnson's feeling the pressure. So what's the bottom line? Chicago's eviction policy might seem like a quick fix, but it's stirring up a hornet's nest of issues. It's a band-aid slapped on a broken system, leaving migrants in the lurch and sparking a battle royale over ethics and effectiveness. Looks like the Windy City's got some soul-searching to do if it wants to find a real solution to this tangled mess. Uncovering the Cracks Let's shine a spotlight on the cracks in the system that Chicago's migrant evictions are uncovering. It's like peeling back layers to reveal a mess that runs deeper than meets the eye. Cities like Chicago and New York are getting slammed with a wave of migrants, and they're drowning in the chaos. But here's the kicker. There's not enough federal backup to keep them afloat. 
it's like trying to juggle with one hand tied behind your back. Local governments are left scrambling to tackle the mounting challenges solo, and let's face it, they're in over their heads. At first, these cities threw open their arms, welcoming migrants with open hearts. But now? Now they're struggling to keep up. They're playing a high-stakes game of financial Tetris with inadequate funding and outdated policies. It's like trying to build a skyscraper with toothpicks. Well, the city initially allocated $150 million for the migrant mission this year alone. Finding revenue streams that are sustainable, tied to our values. A budget that speaks to the values that he ran on, but there were concerns about the cost of caring for housing. Our budget invests $150 million into our mission to support new arrivals from the southern board. Building a budget um, around those values that does not place the burden on working people. Enter the regional big shots like Mayor Johnson and Governor Pritzker, waving their flags and shouting from the rooftops for Uncle Sam to step up to the plate. They're banging on about the urgent need for federal cash injections and smarter rules around work permits. Sure, there have been a few half-hearted attempts to streamline the process, but let's be real, the band-aids aren't cutting it anymore. Migrants are left twiddling their thumbs waiting months for work permits that could be their ticket to stability. While Uncle Sam's got a slick system in place for resettling refugees, asylum seekers are left hanging out to dry. It's like trying to run a marathon with one shoe missing. Without a centralized plan for these folks, cities are left playing a game of immigration roulette, making it up as they go along. Bottom line? Until Uncle Sam gets its act together and rolls out some serious immigration reforms, Cities like Chicago will keep getting sucker-punched by the fallout. It's time to plug those cracks and build a system that's got everyone's back. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.